It is dark in the house here. The only light actually is from the camera highlighting and amplifying. I can barely see. Uh, we have <laughs> death threats and death warnings. I've never seen such a thing. Um, dangerous life-threatening thunder storm alert. I've never seen such a thing. Uh, they're saying that the thunderstorm could have severe winds, severe hail, and damaging and killing lightning. And you should take precautions to, immediately to protect property and life. And that was the actual warning. Welcome to Michigan. Um, storms are severe in Michigan. I just don't remember it being that bad uh, growing up because we didn't have all these cell phones and immediate alerts. We just took each day as it came. Um, Melanie's in the kitchen. Boy, this camera amplifies the light. I think you, I don't know if you just saw that flash lightning flash. So it is black in here. It really it's darker than what the camera shows. So, um, new way of life out here. Storms are powerful and dangerous, whereas in Pine Bush I just had damaging winds, but not so severe. I hardly had thunderstorms at all over there. And here you get blown out a lot. Your, your power gets blown out, your um, devices in your house get blown out. You have to unplug things when the rain comes. So I remember that from when I was a kid. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. Take precautions and get prepared for a bad thunderstorm. Hey everybody. We have been running the roads. When you move to a new address, you have a lot of stuff to do. A lot of administrative things. And by the way, permits for your buildings and paperwork so everything's legal and good and repairing plumbing um, went to town twice already and have to go to town again because the valve in the toilet leaks I'll show you that later um, my tripod another one just self-destructed one day it was just sitting there and just boom it fell apart so I'm walking around with my camera um, using some of the scrap wood here and my favorite Ryobi tools and I'm building a workbench in my new shed so uh, it's gonna be very rugged and I've secured it straight to the walls and then of course the batteries will be down below and then on the workbench I can do my uh, electronics I can set up my Bedini motor and the Quanta generator and the uh, solar power stuff will be above so it's going to work out pretty cool anyway i just wanted to show you what i've been up to here and i'm just going to carry on and i'll just show you updates as i go but basically i screwed a two by four into the studs and i'll probably double up the screws on that later if i think it's necessary i doubt it because then i've taken and made a frame out of scrap two by four and I'm screwing that into the frame here and then into the tabletop. The tabletop is screwing to that. And I'll have one at every uh, every two feet. This is 24 on center. So I'll have a frame and a leg come out every two feet. Which is probably overkill. But it's convenient for me to put it together like that. And um, I still have room with my chair when I sit here. In between, I'll know in a minute. I'm going to make another table leg. But I think I'll have plenty of room to sit in between the uh, the table legs. And then I'll have a very rugged workbench, which will be able to take a lot of weight, including lead-acid batteries as needed. And the Quanta generator is 65 pounds in itself. So definitely need a rugged workbench. And then I'll have uh, places for... Uh, I'll probably put more shelves on the wall here later. So I'm about to uh, make another leg and then drop in the second board and see how it feels. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Hey guys, I'm set up here. I don't have my proper tools, so I'm using a tape measure and a file instead of a speed square. I don't have all my protective gear out yet, so I am Working here with what I have, working on my workbench. So 
It's going to be strong. I usually overbuild everything, people tell me, but I don't care. I don't want them to fall apart on me. Got the camera sitting on a chair instead of a tripod. Now we make things work out here. The off-grid homestead. Well, the soon-to-be off-grid homestead, right? right? Now the on-grid going off-grid homestead. My workshop is certainly off-grid at this time. So I gotta cut two more legs. I'll be back in a minute. I'll show you what I got inside here. Okay, I've got the two boards together and I've got two legs. I may or may not cut a, a rounded edge off here or an angle or something. I can't find my sawzall. I don't know where it went in the move, if it made it here. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought I had it. Maybe it's in a box. But until I get my wood shop, I won't find everything properly. Anyway, this is going to be pretty rugged, and I can sit here comfortably. I'm going to have an angled support going across here down to a leg at the end, so that'll be strong. And then uh, I'll have two more legs over here on the right. And that's, I've, I sat in there, it's comfortable. I can sit between the two, so that's fine. That's going to work out alright for me. So I'm going to do the two more end pieces, and let me show you underneath what I've got. These are cross bracing underneath to hold the boards together. And then to give me something to screw the leg onto, see? So that stud, that, that's screwed into the studs. And then I've got the cross bracing and then the leg screwed into that. So it should be really strong. And then I'm probably going to go and do an angular piece. Uh, yeah, probably up this way. Something like that. To keep that leg from kicking in or out. So, looking good. That's going to be really good. Rugged. That's what I want. I want to be able to really put some stuff on there and work on it and beat on it. And I got those on discount, so the total to cost of the two big boards was like 10 or $11. I think $11 was the total cost of those two big boards. So, can't complain there. They were uh, deeply split, and what I did is I simply put the split and cracked parts off um, in the back. I can probably glue that and clamp it or something later. And... Um, they were badly split down the middle, which isn't going to hurt me at all for my purposes here. And uh, there was another split. But it's going to be so strongly built here, there was another bad split. Anyway, it's going to be strong enough built. This one was actually cut with a saw for some reason. Um, so I put that side down. But it'll hold up for what I need, definitely. That's not going to bother me. Gives me a very, very affordable workbench. And with the cost of a $3 straight 2x4, which I could have used scrap. Um, I went and bought the new 2x4s before I got, you know, I, I came home and I found the scrap 2x4, so that was a bonus. So these will be used for the um, solar panel framing, so I can use them anyway. I'm using all scrap on this workbench. Alright, well, I'm going to cut two more legs and get them on, and then start screwing everything together firmly. Alright, I'm propping my camera on things as I go. So, I'm actually using the bench, sitting on it as I work, or at it as I work. Oops. A piece under there that I cut too short previously. It's coming out. I thought I was going to have to buy an impact driver to do this, but this drill is doing the job. I'm very impressed. And just with doing a lot of screws, it'd be a, a chore. When I was building the house, although when I was building a tiny house, I was using um, Phillips head screws. And I intentionally spent the extra money on this one. I bought the, the screws 
come with a special head. That's tight. That's going to work. I can put one in there. That's going to be real tight. I better put this on first. Anyway, it's coming along well. Somehow this side has warped in a bad way. Once you get weight on it, it should be fine. I think we need weight on it to do it now. Mm. This is enough weight. I got a little pack of batteries. Let us the batteries right here. I hope it's enough weight. I want to get that straight. Nope, it's not enough. Just a little bit. That's what happens when you get used stuff. You get a little bit of warpage. Yeah, well, I'll get one screw in there. I hope I'm recording because this is going to be funny. That'll work. One way or another, I'll get it in there. Yeah. Push down with that thing. Get it started. Yeah. Well, that's awkward. <sighs> Gotta use all your body parts on this job. Using recycled materials or, well, not recycled, but you know, second hand, second grade, whatever you call it. Actually, the legs are all second-hand materials, but they're probably straighter than the uh, boards I bought. Anyway, I want to get this last leg on. That's going to be a challenge because it's in the corner. And then uh, I'm going to have to cut a curve or something on this other end. Put my solar charge controller up. I want it up higher, but that means I'm going to have to have longer battery cables. But what I'm going to do is get some heavy, heavy-duty jumper cables, the biggest I can find, and run them then down to the battery bank. Once I get the battery bank wired together. So jumper cables are the cheapest way to get heavy gauge wire. So there's bank one and that'll be bank two. And I have to desulfate them with the Bedini. And then I'll have the Quanta generator running. Um, work in between the two big banks and see what it can do with a big set of batteries. So this will be fun experimenting now. I have not finished the corner here because I haven't decided. It does not bother me walking in and out so I might end up leaving it as is. And then I'm thinking about sliding these batteries under here uh, level or flush with the end of this and then I can put a shelf over in the corner. So. Give me more space in my workshop. So there's the electronics lab coming along. The electronics lab, battery shed, and workshop coming along. And then I'm eventually I'll do the same thing on the other side. Probably next payday. I'll get that table out of there and put a bench the exact same thing on the other side. And um, when I insulate, this is 24 on center, and I've got an insulation back there in the corner on the far right over there. When I insulate, I'm going to have to cut it sideways, so I'll probably just wedge it in between and then go from the paneling with the paneling from there up and work around that rather than taking it off. Because I need to work now, and I can't afford to do the paneling yet, so I'll probably work from there up and then below, closing off that area. That way all I have to do is move the batteries at that time that I do it. And when I wire these up, I'm going to leave a gap. I'll pull them forward all the way, actually, and that way I can get in there... Um, as far as, you know, far enough, quite a ways at least, down to the floor to, uh, to put fasten the paneling. Worst case, I'll have to disconnect one row of batteries to get in or whatever. I'll figure it out when I get to that. But that'll be later on when I do the paneling because we have summer now. 
and I have a lot more expenses going on with moving in and starting a new house. So, anyway, the beginning. The off-grid homestead, the beginning. Getting it together, guys. Getting it there. Setting up my lab. Basically, I'm just sorting stuff right now. But it's going to be pretty good. One side will be an office, and one side will be a lab and workbench. I got my capacitor experiments over here. And uh, that'll be an ongoing project over here. And then over here will be the Bedini motor, battery bank, solar charging units, and uh, the Quanta generator. Right now I'm just unpacking and sorting. Well, I'm going to go in and take a break. I have no idea what time it is or anything. Probably getting late. It's pretty gray and dark out there. And I saw a lightning flash a while ago, but it was just one. Um, so, break time. <laughs>